It's a big moment in the world of money. NatWest and RBS are launching this. Although the real life ones will probably be smaller. And they should help wave goodbye to fraud. What we're learning from customers is they want experiences to be simple and easy. This means they don't have to remember their PIN. It means from a safety and security perspective, they don't need to worry about standing at a cash point and someone looking over their shoulder and seeing what their PIN is. And we think customers are really going to enjoy the experience. Could they not get a, like a, an imprint? Of no, it's not CSI. Print? It doesn't work that way. Doesn't? OK. So a photograph? No. Nope. If I go high, they just go, oh, yes, excellent. There's um, enough pixels there. That I won't work. That. On a glass, you know, like police evidence kind of things, powder? No, that no, doesn't work. Doesn't work? No. Nothing? No, sorry, your television dreams are shattered. If something goes wrong and I find that somebody's got my money that shouldn't have my money, will you give it back to me? What you can always do is block your card with one yes? phone call. Is that a yes or a no, Georgina? We review all customer experiences <laughs> on a case-by-case -case basis. Right, it's arrived. Uh, I've got a sort of like a card reader and the card itself. And I'm gonna need that little black box to kind of register my thumbprint on the fingerprint reader. I've been invited to take part in a three month trial. The small battery in the reader is enough to power the card. After seeing my thumb from five different angles, it's happy it's got my print. Now, of course, Google and Apple Pay systems using our mobile phones linked to a debit card or credit card offer similar biometric security for payments. But your phone costs a lot more, needs to be charged, and it's a lot bigger. My new card is no thicker than a standard debit card. A strip down of it shows what's going on. On the right is the fingerprint reader. There's no battery inside. Instead, an inductive loop, shown here in red, acts as an aerial for the car to receive power from the car terminal. The six dots at the top are the programming port, and it's here in the microcontroller where my fingerprint is stored and verified, all on the card, so our biometric data never leaves our hands. Uh, coffee, please. Now, using the card is pretty much as easy as it is at the moment, except that you've got to put your thumb or whichever finger you've registered over the golden box so it can recognise it when you make the payment. A green light flashes to show all's OK and that my plastic's not in some trickster TV producer's mitts. Oz! Now, the other big bonus I've found is my new spending limit. Normally, contactless payments cap out at £30, but this allows me to spend up to £100 because of the additional security. And I'm told that by the time it comes to market, well, that limit could be limitless, which means I could get my weekly shopping, fill up my car, or buy a bike just with a tap on my card. So, knowing all that, will the card be secure? Jamalto is behind the tech. The actual sensor we use is dynamic, which means each time it reads your fingerprint, it needs to have a 98-99% match. But if there's a slight variation, a micro scratch in your finger, it will take that into account. So next time, it knows that micro scratch will be there. But does it then allow for somebody with a similar fingerprint to you to get into the system? No, not at all. I mean, the, the variation is so small, it, there's not two people that would be in that level of variation. This would be the biggest change to payment cards for a decade if the banks back it.